Hello, Mark for GetYourRockOut.com. Um, we're here interviewing Jared from Headpiece. Hello. Thanks for having me. No, thanks for, thanks for talking to me. It's very pleasure. Good day. It's a pleasure. Welcome to the lovely shows of the UK. Are you enjoying the ride of the tour so far? Oh, this is a great tour because we've. Uh, we haven't been to this side of the planet for like years. Yeah, it has been a while. Right, so um, we were kind of in between record labels and in between management and in between agents. <laughs> we were in between a lot of things. In between, in between. Right, so 2012 came and brought the uh, the brought the chaos that the Mayans yeah. were speaking of to my to my side of the <laughs> no to head PE, but we lived through the chaos and. Um, now we're in a building back up um, uh, part of uh, you know the the arc, and yeah. uh, we signed with uh, Soil's record label, Pavement. Yeah. And um, then we got a new agent, and um, I started self-managing the band, and so we got back to finally to the UK. Yay! Last time we played here, it was packed. We headlined here. So this time we're third from, yeah, yeah, so this is good. Now, um, we haven't like toured out here with other bands for like 11 years, so it was refreshing to not be the headline band. Okay. Well, I mean, and to go out with a yeah, band that's bigger than we yeah. are. I know, I know what you mean. And obviously it's all that tonight we're at Manchester Venue, and um, you've got your new album, Evolution. Yeah. Uh, have, uh, ninth Is that how you guys um, pronounce it? Evolution? Evolution. Okay. How do you pronounce it? Evolution, but Evolution. we don't speak the Maybe Queen's speak English. The I don't think I do either. Well, uh, it sounds like, it sounds e nice. So I'll start thinking uh, all sorts of <laughs> So, evolution, evolution. Evolution. Okay, Is it the ninth place. studio album? Yeah, it's having EPs in that. Uh, live one. Wow, okay. You've got like 10, 11 altogether. I don't know. I mean, it's hard to keep track. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, maybe that's the blessing from not making too much money off of it any one album is that you keep trying to put them out. <laughs> well, my question is, what, what, my question actually was, what do you put your success and longevity down to? The fact that, you know, you are able to produce your nine Well, studio Jesus, album, that's a little yeah, bit of luck. Some, some it's a lot of effort. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. No, please, what were you saying? What do you attribute? I a lot of bands don't, I don't get that far, you know. Right, Maybe well, you huh. You, you know, money. every band is its own little ecosystem. Yes. So every band has its own way of operating and decides how far it wants to take it or not. But for us, um, or for myself, uh, you know, it's a lot of effort and a little bit of luck. You know, um, I speak for a, a greater, uh, this, you know, I feel like I'm part of something bigger, yeah. you know, uh, and that I've touched a nerve. Um, <coughs> with uh, people, with some of the lyrics and whatever, uh, and some of the, the live show definitely must touch yeah. a nerve, because without that, you know, you know, in this day and age, we're not really, you know, like on the radio or anything like that, it's all like word of mouth, live yeah. show and whatever shit like that, see. but um, I feel blessed because, you know, we signed my first record deal in like 94, mm. so that was 20 years ago, and um, still going. Yeah, you know, music is not a contact sport, so. No. <laughs> so, do you think you, do you think you sounds altered over the albums? Say and it I, again. You, you sound is it is it evolved? Oh yeah. Evolved no, it definitely. The, you know, you can sound. call. It, I think this album is an evolution. One. This album is an evolution yeah. of sound where uh, it's it, <laughs> for once it, it, the whole album embodies a consistent approach. Okay. To to uh, to sound. Yeah. Where uh, normally head PE is kind of schizophrenic in the way that it does. Oh, I'm gonna do a punk song. I'm gonna do a metal song. I'm gonna do a hip hop song. I'm gonna do a reggae song. This album is a more um, focused. Nah, yeah, it's more focused, focused. and the sound is more um, like the, the family of sounds are more in the same tight knit family. So. Yeah. I like this one. I like this one. It's good. Thanks. I do like to be around the tracks as well. We're thanks. We're thanks. Listening to them. I'm used to be song names, you say, so it takes me a while. He'll say a song name, and I'll be like, what? Oh, that song, what? you have to play it. <laughs> Well, you know, like you're saying, so we have like over a hundred songs, and tonight we'll get to play about ten of them. So, how do you go about choosing which uh, songs? You know what it is? Why? It's just for me. It's trying to, 
even if we only have 40 minutes to try and take um, take the listener on a ride, you know. So it has to start off a certain way. There has to be a beginning, a middle, and an end. Like storytelling, right? So that's the way I construct my set, no matter how long or short it is. There has to be a beginning, a middle, of an end, one that to me makes sense. But um, yeah, you know, the evolution of the album is, is really comes from the fact that not just the sound, but me as a person. I've been doing it for 20 years. Yeah. I'm closer to the grave than I am the womb. That's for sure now. Then when I started, it was like, you know, I was just trying to be a pimp. And now I'm like a father and a husband and all that and trying to take it seriously and still represent some of the more hardcore social things that I've come yeah. to, to represent. Which is, I think is important in a lot of the songs that you're not just singing about the same old stuff. You've, you've got a message. And you've that may be why we've it's, gone on yeah. for so long. Yeah, you've got a message, you know, these, this is what I believe in. And, you know, believe in it with me or don't. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying this is what you have to believe in, but right. putting it so that people can express how they feel when they listen to your music. Right, so you then. Do you feel it's easier for you to express as well through the lyrics? Well, yeah, it's almost like at that point when I'm doing any certain album, I'm, I'm going to write about what, uh, and not to sound like um, some sort of like, you know, religious uh, no. sell it. Where I'm like, but I do like go with what's real to yeah. me at right then. So, you know, people are like, at, for like this album's not as quote unquote political. It's more introspective, and people are wondering, well, what happened? And it's like, well, it's not a gimmick, and I'm not like um, trying to repeat myself. You know, like the dude from Rage Against the Machine, like. I, that's pretty rad. I can understand why he would stop doing it. Well, first of all, he's sitting on a mountain of money. <laughs> that doesn't hurt. But once you've said what you need to say, you don't need to keep it or say yourself. something else, right? Yeah, take it on. Yeah. What, what's your take on the downloading aspect of music and the fact that it's, it's, it's a, affected the music industry? But how do you think it's affected? The industry? Okay, so for an artist like myself, yeah. who's like middle class blue collar artist mm. it's um it's good because before you would have like the gatekeepers before yeah. this tech you know who would decide who gets to have a, a, a career in music yeah, and definitely. who doesn't now there are so many different ways to skin the cat because of <laughs> because of um because of uh, technology makes yeah. it so cheap to record yeah. and um you can keep in touch with your people somewhat in ways that have nothing to do with magazines or television yeah. or radio. So for guys like me who who um, aren't, I don't have the talent to, or whatever it is, the skill to write like really good radio songs or whatever it is, I still can find my way to to earn. Yeah. So for me, it's fine. Yeah. But the thing is, is like. I, you know, I started my career before all this downloads, yeah, so, yeah. and I used to get really fat, like um, publish, publishing checks. Yeah. Those are gone now. Yeah. For an artist on my level, I'm sure for the, like the massive ones, they're still beautiful. Yeah, you know, yeah, but for me, those don't exist it. anymore. Yeah. You know, so but that's caused me to kind of change the way that I look at making money in the music yeah. business. But as long as if you're still enjoying putting music out, right. then basically it's now the albums are, are, are promotional tools to have people come to shows so, and buy and t-shirts that's where you're it and, and that's where yeah. I can put food on the table. So obviously here Tori with Soil, American Head Charge, and then there's uh, Wolfborn as well on the bill on this one. If you could tour with anyone, I mean you've toured with a lot of people. Bob Marley, I mean, years, Rage Against on. the Machine, I Led Zeppelin. I can't, can't, I'm glad you listed them because it's a far too big a lot. Is there anybody that you really would like to tour with that you've not? Bob yet? Marley. <laughs> I would have him baptize me. No, I don't believe in that. I don't even know what baptize. No, I love Bob Marley, but yes. you know, Bob Marley, Rage Against the Machine. I mean, these are the you know, the Sex Pistols. You know, uh, I've already toured with Suicidal Tendency, so yeah. I'll just name my favorite acts as who I'd love to tour with. You know. Um, but so, but what what is I know there's ones that I'm not even thinking of that I wish I would list right yeah, now. Yeah. But if, when I'm saying like if with Bob Marley and Led Zeppelin, how can you go wrong? Definitely, you can't. You can't. 
Can you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> that would be quite an amazing job. Wow. <laughs> imagine that. So uh, you've got uh, a few more tours, you've got the rest of this tour in UK, no? Here's, we're so yeah. busy, you know. What are you doing after this tour then? What's next? I've got a lot of tours lined up. Um, yeah. We go home, we do a tour with Nonpoint. Then next year we do a tour with um, yeah. like Power Man 5000. Yeah. Then we go to Australia. Yeah. Then we go to Australia. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. By that time, it may be time to come back here, maybe into June, you know, so I don't know, but um, the thing is, I need to make more money per show. There's not a lack of shows, but I need to make more money per show so I can stay home with my, and raise my son a little bit more. You know, I've got a seven-year-old son. Well, you know, there's a balance there because it's hard, but I also enjoy providing. Yeah. So. You want to provide for him, but at the same time, you can be there. Right. So, striking that balance. Definitely. Every day, a few times a day. Because of technology, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. In the States, you can. And I'll bring him out here pretty soon. Yeah, I think that's good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, when he's. Within the next couple of years. Yeah. Oh, we look forward to seeing you on stage. <laughs> Thanks for your time. All right. It's a pleasure. Good luck with the rest of the talk. Thank you.